Hi everybody, welcome back to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure OCI course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about object storage. So what we are going to cover, what is object storage, various features that is offered by object storage, various object storage resources, object storage API URL, object storage tiers, and auto tiering. That is what we are going to discuss. So let us understand what is object storage first of all. The OCI object storage service is an internet scale, high performance storage platform that offers reliable and cost efficient data durability. So the object storage service can store an unlimited of unstructured and structured data of any content type, including analytics data and the rich content like images, it can be your videos file, it can be your normal files, it can be your images, it can be your log files. With object storage, you can safely and securely store or retrieve data directly from the internet or from within the cloud platform, for example, your compute instances. Object storage offer multiple management interfaces that allows us to easily manage storages at scale. Object storage is a regional service and is not tied to any specific resources such as compute instance. We can access data from anywhere inside or outside of the context of OCI as long as we have an internet connectivity and can access one of the can access the objects using that object storage endpoints. So what are the various features that object storage offers so it's highly available and scalable it distributed durable object storage so object storage is a reasonable service data is stored redundantly across multiple storage servers object storage actively monitors data integrity using checksums and automatically detects and repairs corrupt data you can access object storage via the wide range of APIs available of object storage. Like you want to insert the data, insert the object in your buckets. You want to retrieve it. You want to delete it. There's a wide range of APIs available over the internet, which you can use. You can use the SDKs. You can use the OCI console to maintain your objects, buckets, and other stuff. Or we have a CLI command line interfaces as well. So by default, the data is encrypted at rest using that AES-256 algorithm. And you can define your custom metadata as well. We can define our own extensive metadata as a key value pair of any purpose. For example, we can create descriptive tags for objects, retrieve those tags, and show the data using that custom metadata. Now let us discuss about object storage resources. What are the resources that are available when we create object storage? First is called bucket. Bucket is the first parent. We will say buckets are the logical container for to store objects. Like when you need to store object, you have to create a bucket. Uses, users or system create buckets as needed within a reason. A bucket is associated with a single compartment. So uh, and we have to define policies on the compartment that will define, that determine what action a user can perform, such as create an object, uh, get the objects. The second is called objects. Then you can put any type of data regardless of the content type, for example, images, your logs file, your uh, videos, images, anything. An object is composed of the object itself and metadata of the object. Each object is stored in the bucket. So, uh, and then we have a namespace. Namespace a top level container for all the buckets and objects. When you create your account or, or Oracle creates an account, a unique system generated and immutable namespace will be created, which is unique to your tenancy. The namespace spans all the compartments within a reason. So we can say namespace is your uh, global global resource. We can control bucket name, but those bucket name 
must be unique within the namespace. Now we have the last thing compartment compartment we have discussed already it's a logical container of all the resources in oci so whenever you need to provision or instantiate a new resource every resource is a part of any compartment a root compartment is created by default for each tendency like if we have a tendency name abc the compartment abc will be created as a root compartment Bucket are also created in compartment because it is one of the OCI construct. Now, so like I mentioned, every object you create, you can retrieve it via an API. How the API is constructed like https colon slash slash object storage dot ap hyphen Hyderabad hyphen one since object storage is a regional service. So hence the reason is appended in the URL, which is says ap hyderabad hyphen one and then dot oracle cloud.com and slash and represent namespace and then we will have our namespace that will be uniquely that, that is unique to a tenancy and then slash b b represent the bucket the vision bucket and slash o o represent your object so here you see we have a namespace the first uh in a in a uh, in our API URL, we have our namespace, and then we have the bucket name, which will be represented by the slash B, and then we have an object name here, and we have to prefix slash O slash, and then object name. So this is how the object storage API URL are constructed. It can be a get, it can be a post, it can be a delete, or it can be a list. Now let us discuss about object storage tiers, which are very very important so a uh, cloud oracle cloud infrastructure offers distinct storage classes tiers to address the need for both frequently access less frequently access and rarely access storage the storage tier helps us to maximize access performance while where appropriate and minimize storage cost wherever possible so OCI offers OCI object storage service offers three tiers. One is called standard tier. The standard tier is the primary default storage tier used for the object service data. So when you create any bucket, it will be defaulted as a standard. The standard tier is also known as port storage. It is used for the data that you need to access quickly, immediately, and frequently. Of course, since it provides many benefits, there will be a higher price to store data in the standard tier. You choose a default storage tier, whether standard or archive, when you create a bucket. When set a bucket, uh, when, when set at a bucket creation, you cannot change the default storage tier for a bucket. You cannot so it provides most recent copy of the data like you can maintain versions of your data as well but when you access it it will, will it will provide the most recent copy of your data you cannot downgrade it and basically it is idle for your content repository for accessible scalable data images logs and videos it is idle for repository for accessible backups and data repository for hadoops and big data the second tier is called your infrequent access and sometimes we say it is a cool the infrequent access tier is a cool storage used for data that you access infrequently but that must be available immediately when required of course it's cheaper than your standard tier if you are uploading an object to a standard default storage tier bucket you have to explicitly assign the object to the lower cost infrequent access storage tier and the minimum storage retention for that infrequent access tier is 31 days and when you access the data data retrieval piece is applied and it is basically idle for backups of your on-prem data repository for rarely accessed backups and storage for data replicated or copied from another reason. The third tier is called archive, archive, which is also known as call tier. The archive tier, tier is the primary 
default storage tier used for your archive storages. The archive storage tier is also known as the called storage. It is used for your data sandal, seldom or rarely access. The data which you rarely access, you can use this archive tier. But that, that must be retained and preserved for longer periods of time. And default, so the minimum storage retention for archive is 90 days. And when you need to access the data from your archival uh, bucket, you have to download first. So you have to restore, restore it before you download. And one hour is required for the restoration and 24 hours required for the download. So it is uh, ideal for your compliance and audit mandates, meaning you wanted to store your logs for at least 90 days or 120 days. So you will use archival. It's, it's for historical or rarely accessed content repository, repository data, application generated data, requiring archival for future analysis or legal purposes. So these are the three storage tiers that OCI offers. Now, auto tiering is very important. So what happens is, so auto tiering monitors data access patterns and help you to reduce storage cost by automatically moving objects which are larger than one MB out of standard tier into the infrequent access tier. Meaning if you have some data stored in your standard tier, and you are not using it very frequently. So your the OCI service will monitor that data and will move the data objects from standard to the infrequent access tier. And again, if that data, again, if you are accessing that data frequently from your infrequent access tier, then it will be moved to the standard bucket as the original one. So auto tiering is enabled at the bucket level and monitors the data access patterns of all the objects in the bucket. We can enable auto tiering while we create the standard storage uh, tier. We can also enable auto tiering at any time after the bucket is created. Now let's understand this within a graphical view. For example, you have a standard tier wherein you have created three buckets, bucket one, bucket two, bucket three. And Let's suppose you have multiple objects in a bucket which you which you don't access very frequently. So OCI will monitor, keep monitoring all these data and will see, yes, hey, this data is not used. So what it will happen, it will move all those objects into the infrequent access tier to reduce your cost. And when you access that data very frequently from that infrequent access tier bucket, again, it will be move to your standard tier bucket. So this is how this auto tiering works. So that's all about this object storage. Thank you. Bye-bye.